As you may or may not know, I recently did a video about why I use Vim for writing all the time. And today I'm going to talk about why I generally don't use it for programming. So let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I would say there's probably two main reasons why I don't use Vim for programming. I do use it occasionally, I will do shell script in it just because I don't really need some of these extra features. So I think we can go with the biggest one first, which is I would say the way I look at it is a, a cost value analysis. So I can make Vim behave like an IDE. I can give it autofill, I can give it auto import, I could probably integrate a debugger. I'm not a big fan of debuggers, but if I wanted to, I could do that. I could add some extra helper features, like with my current setup, I'm using multi-cursor, and I love multi-cursor, so I wouldn't want to get rid of that at all. When I look at that, I think that is a lot of work for something that's going to behave basically like my current environment, but be slightly quicker and be slightly more open source. So I've probably mentioned it before, but I'm currently using VS Codium and I've got a Vim plugin for that. So the benefit of that is I get all of the benefits of using Vim keys and it doesn't use Vim script, which is really, really annoying. So it makes macros harder, but you can still do Vim sorta macros. So you can do a lot of those autofill stuff that you would do with Vim. It comes with Auto, actually, it doesn't come with auto input. There's, a, there's an extension for that. But it comes with autofill, which works pretty well for every language except JavaScript, because JavaScript is just such a dynamic language. It has a debugger, which I never use because I'm not a big fan of debuggers. I, I'll talk about that in a separate video. They're very useful, but a lot of the time they add extra complexity when you can just get around it with print statements. But that's not related to this video, we'll talk about that when I get to that video. So, the Vim plugin that I'm using comes with multi-cursor, which is awesome. And I miss it every time I go back to Vim. I, I should just install it, even though I'm not going to use it often. There are occasions when I do want to use it for editing text, so I probably should just go and download it just so I have it. VS Codium's quick file browser is also really nice, and it generally finds everything that I want it to find pretty much straight away. The only exception is when I have regular classes and test classes. Occasionally, it will give me the test classes, which is really annoying, even if I hadn't modified them in like a month or so. So it ends up giving me these classes. And I'm like, wait, this isn't right. But most of the time, it's really good. And I know I can do similar things with a Vim extension. And I think you can, like Vim actually comes with, by default with a autofill, like most things on the show do, where you can just tab complete, but I've tried to use it and I'm not a big fan of it. I think the way that VS Codium implements it is much more powerful and much more useful. Yes, VS Codium is an Electron app, so that comes with the downsides of using an Electron app. Mainly, it is a massive, massive RAM hog and it has a little bit of a slow boot time, but because it's such a simple program being a text editor and all, it's not that slow compared to some other Electron apps you might be used to. When I launch Vim, it launches basically instantly. When I launch VS Codium with like 10 files already open, it launches in maybe a second or two. And honestly, that is perfectly fine for me. It's much, much better than when I was using an IDE, which even though I love the JetBrains suite, I really don't want to deal with like 30 second plus load times, which that is just completely insane. And it mainly comes down to those programs loading so slowly because they have all these features that I'm never going to use. And this is basically why I like using code editors rather than full IDEs. So my other main reason for wanting to use VS Codium over Vim, which the hardcore Vim fanatics will definitely not like, and that is that I have a lot of muscle memory with using a mouse. And there are times when I feel like I can get a lot more done by just clicking on it than navigating over to it with a cursor. Times like this are things like when I know that a file exists in my project, but I can't exactly remember what it's called, and I can't remember what the folder it's in, which doesn't sound like a thing that will happen often, but when you work on a React app that has 120 different classes, that happens quite often, especially when it's been three months since you looked at the class and like, wait, what exactly did I call that again? Where is that class? So in those times, which happen far more frequently than I would like to admit they do, 
I find it easier just to click through stuff than try to navigate through it with my keyboard. Obviously, I could do it with my keyboard, but there's just 20 years of muscle memory to deal with there. And I don't want to try to slow myself down just for the sake of being entirely dependent on the keyboard and removing the mouse from my life. I try to remove the mouse as much as possible, but when I think that it's going to slow me down, I don't bother because honestly, it feels like a waste of time at that point. So I think that might be pretty much everything for this video. If you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon below if you want to see more from my channel. And if you think your friends will like this video, remember to share it with them as well. So I don't think I have anything else to cover. So I reckon that's it, and I'm out.